uh, we're recording now. Um, uh, Mr. Rothman, how would you like the reporters to refer to you? Uh, they can refer to me as Jay. That would be fine. Very good. We'll go ahead with your brief introduction and then we'll start with questions. Okay, great. Well, thank you all. I very much appreciate the opportunity to speak with you this morning. Um, I just say I am honored uh, to be a finalist uh, for the role of president of, of the University of Wisconsin system. Uh, I've you know lived in Wisconsin other than for a few years out of the state for, for law school. I've lived in the state my entire life. And I appreciate how the University of Wisconsin system is such a crown jewel uh, for the state of Wisconsin. And I think certainly the success of the state is is integrally tied to the success of the system. So it's honored to even be considered uh, to to be able to be one of the stewards uh, that uh, potentially could be leading the system. Just by way of background, currently I'm uh, the chairman and CEO of the law firm of Foley and Lardner. Uh, we're about a firm with uh, 22 offices in the US, including in Milwaukee and Madison. We have three international offices. We're about 1,100 lawyers. Um, we started in the state in 1842, in fact, before Wisconsin was a state. Uh, and I've been privileged to serve in that role uh, as chairman and CEO since uh, 2011. Uh, I'm coming near the end of my term as uh, the chair of the firm. I am not eligible for, for re-election under the terms of our partnership agreement. Um, and so it, it just was an opportune time for me to think of uh, stuff, uh, to uh, think of my next chapter, uh, to, to be honest with you. Um, and uh, but before I uh, was in my role that I have right now, I spent about 25 years and still practice, uh, not as actively as I used to, but I was uh, uh, in the merger and acquisition space, uh, strategic transactions. Um, corp, um, corporate governance and capital markets, which would be the uh, offering of uh, securities, both in the public sector and in the private sector. Um, I'm delighted to be with all of you this morning and look forward to your questions. Thank you, Mr. Rothman. Uh, Kelly, would you like to start us out? Sure. My first question is, um, what can you bring to this job that, that nobody else can? Well, Kelly, it's a, it's a fair question since I, I, I don't know, am, am I unique? Uh, I, I don't know if, if I'm particularly unique, but I think some of the skills that I, I bring to the table is I have a passion for the state. I mean, this is home for me. This will always be home for me. And I want to see Wisconsin flourish. You know, as I mentioned, I've had the, the privilege uh, for the last nearly 11 years of leading a large, complex organization. Uh, and in that, I think I've learned a lot around how to to lead and to, to manage people. Um, a law firm is a pretty non-hierarchical uh, institution. Uh, we depend on the individual entrepreneurial skills and leadership skills of our partners, of which there are nearly 500. Um, they are intelligent and they are independent. Uh, and I suspect the same is very much true of, of leading the system, that you think about shared governance, uh, and that's an important component to the system as I understand it. You know, I have I have functioned in that environment. I certainly, as part of my role, I have been deeply involved in strategic planning and execution of strategic plans. I have experience in implementing uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, planning uh, for our firm. Um, I've led our firm through COVID and and everything else that was going on. And when I say I lead, I have to be careful about that. We lead as a team here. Uh, it is a very collaborative environment. I and mean, I think my connections with the business community, I've practiced uh, business law my entire career in the state of Wisconsin. So I've got great connections with, uh, the, with the business community in the state. And I think that could be helpful. And, you know, and I've, and I've worked in, and I, and I oversee functional and operational areas, uh, whether that be IT, whether that be, I, you know, information security, talent recruitment, development and retention. Um, finance, business development, um, risk management, legal affairs are, are all things that I have uh, oversight responsibility for. And I think that positions me well uh, to serve uh, as, as president of the system. I think that skill set uh, is really one that would translate very well. And in my community involvement, I've been involved in a number of uh, fundraising campaigns, both at Children's Hospital and, and elsewhere. So I have some sense of what that is, because I know that's an important uh, part uh, of the role in terms of funding the university in addition to government funding and, and elsewhere, but certainly being able to raise and understanding the fundraising piece. 
is is something I bring to the table. Now, uh, whether that's unique or not is is something that you'd have to decide. But I think that is those are the skill sets that I see at least that I bring to the table. The last that I'd mention is that I have always been I viewed myself as the protector of our culture. And there's the, the old management guru, Peter Drucker, that said, uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. And I still believe that's true. If you get the culture right, and we work really hard at getting the culture right about leaving the place better than you found it, that's what, the, that's what we talk to our partners all the time. If you get the culture right and you get really great people, great things will happen. And I think that's one, one of the other focus areas that I think I bring to the table that would be helpful in this role if I am honored to be selected. Uh, thank you, Davey. Hi, thank you. Um, so my question is, um, according to the Illumina Foundation, only 54.7% of the state has obtained an associate degree or higher. Our state faces one of the worst black-white educational opportunity gaps and educational gaps also in rural areas as well. Um, so what are three things you think the system can do to make sure that more upper underrepresented Wisconsinites can access and thrive in higher education? Well, I, I think for today it's, it's a great question and it's, it's certainly, I think, a challenge that we have in, in Wisconsin. I think the, the, the first thing I think we need to do is, is work on the accessibility and the affordability piece. Uh, so that, and, and certainly going to Wisconsin is a great bargain, but that still is out of the reach of a lot of people financially, and we need to figure out how we do a better job of that. Secondly, I think uh, it is incumbent on the system to play a role. It certainly can't be uh, the, the, the it, this has to be a, a combination of a lot of different entities, but to get into the K through 12 space and talk to people and provide a pathway so that so that kids can understand that getting to a university and getting an undergraduate degree is within their reach and it's something that they can shoot for and it's not just something that's that's available to someone else um, i think that is that is 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 critically important and then i think supporting them when they get to the university to make sure that they're coming from different perspectives and different environments uh, and to be able to support them and and understand what it's like to be different in that environment. And um, I think those are the three things that in my mind would help us. This is a journey, but we have got to do better. And I, you think about the, the, the Wisconsin idea and how critical that the, the, the point that you just made is to achieving the Wisconsin idea about having the university system really impact the lives of everyone in the state of Wisconsin and beyond. Uh, thank you, Rich. Uh, thank you, Jay and, and Mark and Jack as well for, for letting this thing happen. Um, my question is uh, salaries for employees like faculty on average, according to the UW system da accountability dashboard are nearly 17% lower than at institutions and systems. That's, that's an average. Salaries for chancellors are also well below those offered at peer institutions. So. What concrete steps, if any, would you take to address this, you know, given political realities in Wisconsin? Well, I, I think we, we have to be in a position to pay market compensation for faculty members. I mean, you, you think about, um, and this is another way that I think my experience in, in the law firm transitions, you have to pay market compensation. That can't be the only piece. Uh, it's got to be other things in terms of research dollars. It has to be in terms of culture and environment and people want to have to stay. It's not just money, but I think we have to address uh, faculty compensation so that it is uh, so that we are fairly compensating faculty al along the lines. And I appreciate, listen, uh, dollars are scarce um, and um, there are different sources of, of funding that are available to the system. But it is a challenge, but I think it is a challenge that has to be addressed. And can we do that through driving more operational efficiency? Uh, are there other areas that we can look at so that we can can pay the staff that are ultimately the faculty that are ultimately going to drive their reputation in such a great degree and provide the experience for the students that they deserve? Uh, they have to be paid fairly. Uh, I think it, it, it's an issue that has to be addressed. I don't, do I have the answer today? Um, uh, absolutely no, uh, but I think it is something that I, I would be 
prepared to address rich within that context because I think it's that important. Uh, Scott. Great. Um, Jay, thanks for doing this. I'm Scott Bauer with the Associated Press um, in Madison. Could you um, talk about, you know, the university has had a rocky relationship uh, over the past decade or so with the legislature, maybe since it was the system was formed, actually. Um, what what would you do as president to work with the Republican controlled legislature and um, the current governor and whoever the governor will be um, next year? Um, very fair question, Scott. Um, I, I think what what my plan would be to come in is to spend time individually with the legislature, with the legislators, um, and having a candid conversation. They obviously have a responsibility uh, to make sure that taxpayer dollars are spent wisely, and that the investments that they're making on behalf of the state are prudent. Uh, on the other hand, the university is, as I said at the beginning, I think that the success of the university system is absolutely essential to this, the success of the state of Wisconsin. And I think we have to have that candid conversation. I would welcome the opportunity to meet with the legislature, legislators in their districts, you know, preferably at the universities, at the different campuses, and have those conversations. And just be transparent, be honest, be candid, um, because I would hope that at the end of the day, we all have the same goal, and that is to see Wisconsin thrive. And I understand there are different perspectives about how that can work and how people view that and how it should be funded. But those are the things that we can talk about. But if we have a common goal, if we have a common goal that the, 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 that to make sure that the state flourishes, to make sure that people are educated, um, I, I think that to me is is the starting point. I think you've got it's got to be a trust relationship. Um, and it's one of the things I've always prided myself on. My word is my bond. Um, and if I disagree, I'll tell people. But I, I want to be able to have honest, honest discussions. And I have those with my partners all the time. And I, I can assure you with nearly 500 partners, they don't necessarily all agree um, with, with either where I'm at or where the direction is. And I would expect that. And I think that that back and forth, that cognitive dissonance can be important to finding the right solution. But I think we have to address it so long as we are focused on the same goal. Uh, thanks, Mr. Rothman. Uh, we'll go back to Kelly. Um, my second question is about uh, enrollment. The system has 13 branch campuses. Many of them are struggling to enroll students. Um, for example, UW Platteville Richland reported 75 students are enrolled on their campus this fall. Um, at what point should should a campus close, if if at all? I think Elliot, it's it's a fair question, and and I don't know if I have an answer to be able to say you have to be at this level of enrollment. The first thing I think we need to look at is are there students in those areas that those campuses could serve that we haven't accessed yet? Is the demand there uh, for the educational opportunity before we would start to say, okay, this campus needs to be closed? Have we done everything we can? to reach into the K through 12 environment or into the tech school environment for people if they're transferring over into the into the system before we we think about that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, if 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 a if a particular campus is no longer viable, yeah, I you know you, you have to face the difficult uh, point of saying, you know, do we have to look at at, at some other option? But I think the first option ought to be, because I think it goes back to Davy's question earlier, and that is to say, we have a lot of people in the state that could benefit from being in the system. How do we get them there? How do we help them financially to be? And then how do we help them uh, academically to be successful? Because those are people that are gonna continue to live in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, and I think that's, a, that's another adjunct to that. I mean, we wanna retain as many of those great students as we can, and the technology that the system spins off, and, and you see that, you know, with Exact Sciences announcement earlier this week, you know, that, that's just fantastic. And the reason that they're locating in Madison is because they can get people, and and, and so that's a, you know, it, that, that is something that I think is critical. So I do think we have to be careful about how we approach closures. But I would go first to saying, what can we do to build up the vibrancy and the sustainability of those campuses before we look at saying we just ought to just just close them. Oh, thanks. Uh, Davey. 
All right, and I forgot to introduce myself, but I'm from the journal Sentinel. Um, so my next question is um, from budget cuts to a national decline in the public's confidence in higher education. There are some who have characterized the system's pre pandemic chapter as a timid 1. Um, if selected as the next president, how would you work to combat that perception and remind the public and the legislature legislature of the system's value? I mean, I, I look at it in, in a couple of different ways, Davey. First of all, I think in in whatever environment we, we operate in, but certainly in the current environment, having people who are well educated, who are prepared to think critically and, and prepared to think innovatively is absolutely critical. And that to me is is where the system can deliver. I think the system can deliver if you look at the, 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 the technology that is being created at the system. I mean, you, you, you think about this and, and I think, you know, oftentimes, and, you know, we, we, we look at issues and we say, okay, where are all of the challenges? And we, we're right to do that. We also all look at it and say, we've got a world, you know, we've got a world-class research institutions and we've got this enormous campus and universities across the state that we should be absolutely proud of. This is a great thing for us. Um, this is what can differentiate Wisconsin from a lot of the, the states in this country is this system. And that to me is I think we have to continually have that discussion and the value of education and what that means. Because you, you, you think about it when, when I went to school at some level, you know, universities were there to provide knowledge. Knowledge now is in some sense ubiquitous. But you still have to, to be able to sift through that and figure out what is what is accurate, what is inaccurate, what is a valid position, what what isn't. I think what universities prepare students to do, and, and and adult learners as well. This is not just limited to people who have gone through and graduated from high school and then are in college. So throughout the, the, the course, is to be able to to think, be able to think critically. To think about what the next step is, what the what what the next development is. I mean, I think the university can be absolutely helpful in supporting great in industries that drive Wisconsin, whether that's manufacturing or agriculture or healthcare. But what's the next piece? You know, technology is going to drive the economy going forward. If we don't have the talent in the state of Wisconsin to help that technological transformation, which we're all going through, we know that. Where are we going to be? And that to me is the overarching piece of why I'm excited about the opportunity to serve in this role because I just believe in this. I really do. And, and that to me is, is, is what, what we have to do. We can, we can create the value. And I know, listen, I know people have, well, you know, you shouldn't be investing in and in going into debt to get a liberal arts education. And you know you should be focused on 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 STEM, and and I agree. Listen, that's important. That's really important. But we also need liberal arts people, and because the world is going to change. The job that you're doing today is not the job you're going to be doing five years from now and ten years from now, and unless you can educate yourself along the way, you're not going to be as successful. A university experience, if it's done well, teaches you to educate yourself over time. And I think that's what we want to want to be looking at. And I know that's a, a long winded answer to a very to a very direct question. But I think in my mind, that's what we need to try to achieve. Go ahead, Rich. All right, and, and I'm Rich Kramer with Wisconsin Public Radio. So, so apologies for that earlier. Um, no my uh my guys, microphone rich it had to be you because uh you, you look like you're set up to go on the air so that's great oh yeah home studio all the way yeah. um so my next question is uh the former uw system president ray cross came up with a blueprint for the uw system in 2020 uh, in light of declining enrollment and state investment in which he said comprehensive universities cannot continue to be all things to all people it suggested, uh, the plan suggested things like changing the mission uh, statements of state universities and eliminating some academic programs based on enrollment projections. So given the trends with enrollment, uh, state investment in the UW system, can regional universities afford to be all things to all people anymore? It, it's it's a really fair question, Rich, and I think you know, and I did look at what President Cross had, had put together, and it's, it's it's some interesting observations. I think the first place to start 
would be uh, if if I were to be honored to be selected as president, is to sit down with the chancellors, um, and and really have that conversation with the chancellors who understand their institutions, and understand their institutions well. And interesting, under the the authorizing uh, legislation for the system, Chapter Thirty Six says, you know, the campuses, the, the individual universities have the broadest. Uh, available autonomy, um, which in my mind said the system ought to have a strategic vision about what it wants to achieve. But each of those separate universities driven by the chancellors under the chancellor's leadership should have their own mission. And there may be points in that where there are there that do you create centers of excellence? And does River Falls do something different than Eau Claire? Uh, does Green Bay do something different than Stevens Point? Um, and and think about it that way. I think there's opportunity there uh, where maybe we don't have maybe we don't duplicate across and different campuses have different areas of of expertise. But I think that's really something that I would welcome the opportunity to sit down and speak with with the chancellors. Obviously, President Cross had been in the role, and um, I certainly respect his perspective on that. I'd like to understand it from the chancellor's perspective and just see how they would view the world. Uh, thank you. We're down to our uh, last question from Scott. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you about tuition, um, and but I also want to get your age. So if you wouldn't mind telling us your birth date, just in case your birthday is tomorrow. And then also um, on tuition, do you, we were just coming out of an eight year tuition freeze. Um, do you feel like that was good policy and what, no matter what your answer is to that, what is your approach to future tuition increases? And, and, and Scott, I, I'm 62. In fact, my birthday isn't tomorrow, it's today. So I, I have an unusual way of celebrating my 62nd birthday, but uh, I thought this was my party, but apparently it wasn't. So that's, that's okay. Um, in, in terms of the tuition itself, um, you know, I, it, it, it's, it's, it's that, that, the, 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 the yin and the yang that you, you kind of go through, because I think one of the great values and one of the important pieces of the system is to make it affordable and accessible. And I think we have to be careful about how we manage tuition within that guideline. So, you know, the, the eight year freeze is, is certainly something that the legislature adopted and I'm sure for, for good and valid reason. Um, I know more recently um, they've allowed a little bit more flexibility uh, relative tuition. And I think we want to look at that because I know the regions increased tuition for out of state students um, because it's always interesting as I've traveled the country about and I talk to my partners who have uh, college age kids about how big a, a draw Wisconsin is and people are willing to pay the freight because it is such a great university. Uh, and they'll say, boy, I want to, I want to hope my kid can get into Wisconsin. Um, and I think that's a great thing. That's a great thing. And is there, are there marginal tuition dollars there are, are available? And I think we need to take a hard look at, you know, in-state tuition. Uh, and I'm not suggesting we raise it, but can we look at it in a way of um, looking at it where, where if people have the means to pay, is, is it a different structure? I don't know. And I think that's something I think we need to sit down with, with the finance team and take a look at because it's not just tuition. It's 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 research dollars coming from the federal government. It's money coming from the state. It's money coming from philanthropy, uh, and 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 the alumni base. You know, and then then, then tuition as you look at that whole package. So I don't think you look at one and try to pull out and say, okay, this is what we need to do. I think we need to look at that uh, as a package. Um, all that I can say from from my perspective, um, the education that somebody gets from. Uh, the, a Wisconsin university, including my daughter who graduated a couple of years ago. Uh, it is, it is a great value. Great value for the, for uh, the tuition dollars that are paid. All right, well, with that, we'll end uh, the session. Um, Mr. Rothman, thank you very much for joining uh, us today. Very much. Right, thank you and, and, and have a happy course. birthday. Thank you, and Rich and Kelly and Davey and Scott, thank you as well. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Be well, everybody. Goodbye.